evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for October 16, 2017. Can I have a motion to go into executive session for the matters pertaining to the employment history of particular individuals and contractual negotiations? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Can I have a motion to go back into public session? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you all for being patient. We're sorry we're late. Um, Good evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for October 16, 2017. Can we please stand for the pledge given by our middle school students, followed by a moment of silence for our armed forces and those in our Yorktown community who have lost loved ones, especially the brother of Mario Cruz and the father of Suma Gannon. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Invisible, liberty, justice, for all. So good evening, everyone. So Dr. Hatter, is oh, we're going to go to public comment first. Is there anybody wishing to speak on agenda-related items? OK. Dr. Hatter, we have good news from the middle school. We do. What an exciting night this evening. So I will open briefly with just a few items, and then we'll turn it over to our much highly anticipated student presentation, which in reviewing what everyone prepared, I'm really excited to hear about everything you've learned and everything you're going to share this evening. But I will begin by reminding everyone that next week begins Board of Education Recognition Week, and districts across New York State honor their boards of education for the fine work that they do. They're all volunteers, and our board puts in a tremendous amount of time for the benefit of our students. So it's going to be wonderful to have the opportunity to celebrate their fine work. And at our October 30th Board of Education meeting, which will be held right here in this room on, at 7 p.m., I encourage you all to come out as we will be recognizing the outstanding contributions of our board of education to the students of Yorktown. On Friday, just to speak really briefly, and under the leadership of Ms. Horowitz and her team at the middle school, we welcome Mark Merrill, former WWF, a WWE superstar. His motivational talk about the importance of the choices that students make was so moving. It was inspirational, it was emotional, it was uplifting all in one, and I really commend Ms. Horowitz and her team for bringing that opportunity and that experience to our students. I think they all left with a renewed sense of purpose and a renewed appreciation for all who they interact with on a daily basis. So thank you to Mrs. Horowitz and her team. We have an auditor's report this evening. Will we turn that over to Alec after our students present or would yeah. we do that now? Okay. So E-STEAM is moving full steam ahead, pun intended. We, later on this evening, parents can expect an email in their inbox speaking to the logo design challenge for eSteam, where we'll be celebrating the logo submissions of our students in grades K through 12 to help us advance our branding of eSteam in the Yorktown Central School District. It's an exciting endeavor that really highlights the work of empathy in underpinning the work in STEAM education. So the winners will have lunch with me and Mr. Cole and Ms. O'Shea, their principal, and they can bring two guests of their choice along with a great gift basket of prizes and gift cards. So I look forward to reviewing all of the submissions. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. And to continue on in that work, Mrs. Horowitz and her team at the middle school have designed a wonderful presentation for us this evening. And you'll notice the shoes and the footwear on the table. We're not having a sale, but I'll invite Mrs. Horowitz up to speak to that. Mrs. Horowitz, welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Dr. Hatter, Mrs. O'Shea, Mr. Cole, Mrs. Carbone, and members of the Board of Education, I'd like to thank you for giving us this opportunity to present to you. Tonight we'll be presenting on the E in E-STEAM on empathy. As Dr. Hatter said, we had a wonderful day on Friday. We're still getting emails from parents saying, my child loves me. I'm like, yes, they do, because they reminded from the presentation. And we had a wonderful start to the year building on empathy and our character, Ed. Thanks to Mrs. O'Shea with Dr. Borba coming in, and that's what our presentation is based on tonight. So without further ado, I'd like to invite up Mrs. Maniccio and Mrs. Cocadrilli and our wonderful students to present.
Good evening. My name is Michelle Manicchio, and I'm a seventh grade English teacher here at Strang Middle School. My name is Beth Cocadrilli. I'm the ICT teacher on that team, which means it's integrated co-taught, where I teach with each academic teacher, and I end the day with Ms. Manicchio. And what brings us here tonight to share our good news actually started last spring. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to participate in one of the book study groups for Dr. Michelle Borba's book, Unselfie. I was not part of the group, but um, I could have been, but I actually vol I voluntarily read it because I was hearing everybody's enthusiasm, and as a parent, I decided I want to I wanna read this as a parent, um, as well as a teacher. Um, partly because I have a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old, and I'm concerned about the societal focus on me, 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 and self, self, self. So over the summer, after having both read it, in the spring and the summertime, we decided when we met for curriculum that it was time to shift our all about me to all about we. So we're going to let the students, these wonderful <laughs> student representatives from our team, some of which we teach together and some that I don't see, but Ms. Minicchio has earlier in the day, and they're going to explain their experience and what they've learned through the beginning of our school year. Okay, guys, come on. The, in the essential question that we focused on in our first unit was how do others learn who we really are? So we began exploring this question with our Unselfie project where we created posters, we traced our hands, and in them we wrote five unselfish actions that we do to help others without expecting anything in return. For example, I wrote that I help anyone get to class to class when they're on crutches. We also chose a quote to put in our speech bubble next to our picture. I wrote that optimism is a faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. We finished this project, and now we are writing our lawyer essay which is all about the layers that, that are within ourselves that we don't always show others. Thank you. This year, Team H is all about empathy. Sympathy and empathy are two different things. Sympathy is feeling sorry for someone and letting them know you care, while empathy is really putting yourself in their shoes and help them go through whatever they're going through. While empathy is a noun, we're working this year on making it a verb and doing and showing empathy for others. Then we saw this short clipping class that really showed us the true meaning of empathy and stepping in someone else's shoes. Why should it be like this? 
Not I, darling. It's not fair. Yeah, I know. There's nothing to be I don't want to be like this. Me neither. I wish I was like him. I want to be like him. I want to be like him. I want to be like him. We forgot to have a student introduce themselves. That was part of our plan. So. <laughs> Melanie Joseph. My name is Jillian Monica. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Raka, and we walked into English class one day, and there were six pairs of shoes on the tables, and we were really confused and wondered what the shoes were for. At first, we thought that maybe we would have to wear the shoes, but that didn't really make sense. So then when our teachers told us that we would be coming up with stories behind the shoes, it was a lot harder than we expected. For example, these are stories we came up with for the military boots and the high top sneakers. My name is Charlie. And when, when we saw the kids high top sneakers, my group thought that they played sports and they liked to run around. The real story, however, was that the boy came from a tough family and he did well as a student. He believed in teamwork, but he, he started getting bullied and felt lost. Another set of shoes were the military boots. My group and I thought the soldier served the country and helped us. The real story was that he could not afford college, so he joined the military, but his leg was amputated after he stepped on a landmine while on a mission. We learned that there is more to everyone's story. Hi, I'm Michaela. Um, after that activity, we got homework. <laughs> after that activity, we got homework. Our homework was to choose from five quotes that we thought made the strongest impact on ourselves and others. Step into my shoes and walk the life I'm living. And if you get as far as I am, just maybe you'll understand how strong I am. This quote is very important. A lot of people don't understand what you're going through until they actually experience it. There's a lot of things that you can't talk to people about because you know that no matter how many times you explain it to them, they won't understand. I recently went through some family drama that I can't talk to about to anyone other than my parents because I know they will only they will understand what happened. I have to act very mature for my age at home, at home, and nobody really realizes how many things I have to go through and how strong I have to be to handle them. It's hard to be strong all the time, but to have someone truly understand what's happening to you emotionally is hard. It's so easy to hide sadness and pain. No one really asks if you're okay, and when they do, they don't want a big, a long answer. People always think you're being dramatic because they don't know what it's like to have something really serious happen to them. It's really important to ask how people are and really mean it because you never know what's happening to people emotionally. You also need to try and understand everything that they're going through. If you just say, oh my God, I'm sorry, and go back to the thing that you were doing, doesn't help them. Have a conversation with the person. Relate to them. It makes them feel better if they know someone else knows what they're going through. Everyone can't go through things alone. If you can be this person to try and put yourself in their place, it really, really helps.
Hi, my name is Brayden. As we have been learning about empathy and acceptance, our English teacher has been reinforcing this policy through literature. So far, we have read A Corner of the Universe by Anna Martin and Freak the Mighty by Rodman Philbrick. Throughout the year, we will be reading many more books with themes about empathy. In A Corner of the Universe, Hattie, who is the protagonist, finds out that she has a secret uncle, Adam, who has a mental disability. Hattie has to deal with Adam, who acts like a child even though he is 21. She has to learn how to be patient and tolerant and how to be empathetic towards Adam. These are three virtues that everyone should have and three that everyone might not have. In Freak the Mighty by Rodman Philbrick, the main character, Max, sees he has a new neighbor. The new neighbor is named Kevin or Freak. Freak is called this because he is very small but has a very big mind. In school, kids have always made fun of Max because he was stupid and bigger than everyone else. Now, when Freak moves in, him and Max form an uncanny relationship, becoming Freak the Mighty. This shows that you should be nice and empathetic to everyone, not just people who are normal. You never know when a new friend will come into your life, so be open. Always remember that you should be empathetic to everyone. That ends our good news, um, but we do want to thank you, and we hope that we've inspired you to leave, live each day mindful of what it's like to walk in someone else's shoes. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say these three, these, all six of these students were phenomenal in the sense that they gave up a lot of time this week just to kind of get our ideas together. Last week, too, right? <laughs> so a number of lunch periods, and they were willing to just come in without argument, without complaint, and just step up and represent our team. So thank so you. So if we can keep them again next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means you're moving up. You're not keeping them. <laughs> I don't think you can keep these kids back. They were phenomenal. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. May I just, I just want to commend, obviously, our teachers, Mrs. Horowitz, her leadership team at the middle school, Students, you did an outstanding job today, and not only in the lessons that you've learned from an empathetic perspective and walking in someone else's shoes, because we never know what burdens others carry, but your public speaking skills, I just want to commend you on. You stood up in front of a microphone in front of a pretty formidable audience, and you really presented yourselves very well. I commend you for that, in addition to the great content that you shared with us tonight. Well done tonight. Mrs. Horowitz, if I can just call you back up to the microphone, can you just kindly acknowledge and introduce any other staff who are in attendance this evening? Definitely. I'd like to welcome uh, Penny Jones, who is our so school social worker. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I have Mr. Shailen and Ms. Shiano here, my assistant principals. And you're going to be getting... I'm doing a plug, Dr. Hatter. We're, um, Ms. Jones is one of the spare people who spearheaded our um, pillows for patients for our Puerto Rico drive. So you'll be getting emails about that. We're really trying to reach out to our to these children in the Puerto Rico hospital. And we are creating, going to be creating pillows filled with different items. And we are asking each school to get involved. So each school has two different items to to contribute, to be contributed, and of course the hand sanitizers. And then we're gonna do a packing party, pack them up and ship them off to um, Puerto Rico to a, ho um, a hospital there that we made contact with specifically. Well, how wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> yes. We just take a five minute break. Um, Welcome back. We're gonna do the superintendent's update. The middle school is always great. I love the empathy piece, I love walking in your shoes and not knowing, that was really, it was really great, thank you. That presentation was spot on, and uh, to conclude our update, it's something a little bit less uh, <laughs> exciting, but certainly important in our work here in the district, and it's discussing the auditor's report, specifically the external auditor's report. And we use the services of Raymond Prusser, CPA, and once again, our audit was remarkable. We have Alex Sobin with us here of Raymond Prusser, 
to discuss the report, but before that, Mr. Cole, is there anything that you'd like to add or to introduce in this? Well, I, did, I would like to, if we could just um, uh, acknowledge uh, Tom Donatelli and his uh, chairmanship of the committee that received the audit. Tom, I don't know if you wanted to preface <coughs> Alex's remarks with your own. Yeah, this is just part of the annual cycle. Uh, as uh, Ron said, the auditors have completed their report, as you'll hear from our uh, from Alec, uh, our auditor. Um, you know, the district, as usual, has done a, a nice job, you know, taking care of our finances, our financial statements. But why don't we let uh, we Alex uh, talk? Alex, will you also be covering the new law? Uh, yeah. uh, good. Okay. Yeah. So I, I want to make sure everybody is aware yep. of that. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I know I'm not exciting, but. <laughs> Once again, I've clear, once again, I've cleared the room, so. <laughs> uh, um, I'll just tell you quickly, um, the audit went extremely well. Uh, your staff does an excellent job of uh, following procedures, maintaining internal controls, doing the books, and preparing schedules that we need for our audit. Um, and I will add that the staff that Tom has put together is the best that I deal with, um, and efficiency and knowledge and right down the line, so it's a pleasure to work with them. <clears throat> Financially, your district remains in good condition. Uh, your general fund unassigned fund balance uh, remains at the 4% of the current year's budget, which is the maximum allowed. Uh, your reserves are good. Uh, kudos for getting the capital reserve in. <laughs> um, it'll be a good help to you down the road. Um, the law that Tom was alluding to is a new, uh, it's new for this year, it takes effect in 1718. It's a financial transparency law uh, where you'll be required to put certain financial information on your website. Um, transparency, I guess, for the taxpayers. Uh, that'll include the, the audit, um, a reserve plan, uh, which I believe Tom has pretty much completed. Um, and if you have a financial three-year three, three year financial plan, five-year financial plan, whatever you might do, uh, they would like that on the website as well. Um, so it's just something you should be aware of. Um, that's really all I have. Everything is good, good, good. Um, staff, again, pleasure to work with. Uh, we enjoy being here. If anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to entertain. Thank you. <laughs> I always turn it off. Um, we appreciate the time you put in, and, and we know Tom has a, a phenomenal staff, and we thank Tom and the Audit Committee for um, the evening of reviewing it. That was a lot. Yep. Were there, I know that um, you didn't have too many concerns with our major financial audit. Extra right. Crestler Activity Funds Audit usually mm -hmm. has a few issues that we are trying still to deal with. Yes, um, and you're not alone. This is a very, very difficult area to control. Um, we try to have, uh, let's say, you know, you're talking about cash receipts. When, when kids turn, kids and advisors turn money in, they should provide backup for where the money came from, uh, not hold on to deposits for any length of time. Um, it's an un, there's an unwritten rule of, of money that comes in should be deposited within three days. Um, when we, we do audits and we see a deposits for $10,000 and $20,000, we kind of figure that didn't come in, you know, in the last 24 hours. So that's where we, uh, you know, make the comment. You're not alone. It's very difficult to get out and get, it, get the word out. Um, you just have to keep harping on it, you know, through the advisors, uh, your central treasurers, um, just to have... You know, if, if money comes in to your central treasurer and, and there's no backup, she should turn around and say, I want to know who, who paid this money in. You know, not just here's 500 bucks or here's $1,000. You don't know if they collected an extra 500 and didn't bring it in. So, you know, you just don't know. So the more backup that there is, uh, it's easier for her and easier for us in the audit. So, but probably 98% of the schools in the state are in the same boat. You do the best you can, uh, try to impose these controls. Uh, it, it's just a, sometimes if you harp on it long enough, somebody gets the message. So uh, it's, just, it's just hard to do, but the effort can be made. 
we tell Tommy's got a harp on it, he will. <laughs> well, the, the good news is that there, there's been significant improvement in this area from three yes. years ago. Yes. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with the process we put in up front for approving fundraisers, uh, which goes all the way up through the superintendent of schools now. Um, and that helps a great deal. It's on the back end with the collection at the student level that we're still constantly reinforcing. Okay. Terrific. Anthony, do you have any questions? Mike? I mean, I guess you, you, if there's, you know, 2% of the school districts out there doing it really well, is there anything we should, you know, be doing differently, or is it really just getting the message well, across? Well, there's, there's one function that could be installed. <laughs> it's called a faculty auditor. Uh, someone on the faculty with some knowledge of, of book keeping and what the, what the advisors and, and student treasurers should be doing. Um, I suggest, like, if you have this person, a faculty auditor, every once a month, their duty would be to go to the central treasurer, make sure her books are in order, that she did her bank reconciliation. That can take five minutes. The big thing that I like to see is they would call in maybe two or three clubs a month, bring me your books, let me see what you're doing. Do you, do you go to the central treasurer and compare your balance to hers? Do you know that to have the same amount of money? This, this could go a long way, especially in a district this size, if you wanted to do that. Okay. It is suggested in the state manual that you do it. Um, if there's some person, I mean, somebody in the business office could do it. We have claims auditors that do it. That's what I was thinking. We have, we have a claims auditor now. Is that something we may be able to contract with them for? Possibility. Okay. Well, they could, they could spend a, a half hour, 45 minutes a month mm -hmm. and just select two, three clubs, have them bring their stuff. Let me see. Because they're, they're supposed to maintain their own set of books. So bring, bring me your books. Do you check with the treasurer? You know, are you, do you have all your backup for your money that came in? And Good. eventually the message gets across. I mean, it's something we should look at. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Rashmi? I'm good, thank you. Tom? Yeah, um, Alec, maybe you could just comment. In the last two audits, I think we had some commentary on uh, one of our reserves being slightly overfunded. Mm -hmm. uh, how do the reserves look now? Are we, did we correct that with the capital reserve? Yes, to an extent. The, the retirement contribution reserve, based on the reasonableness that the state wants to see of maybe three or four years' worth of expense in that reserve, you're slightly over that yet, but it came down a lot with the uh, moving money into the capital reserve. So okay. in time, you know, we're not a, a hard thing <laughs> to, you know, to do it all. you got to do it right away. Um, Tom's doing it in a, in a proper fashion. Um, keep moving money that you can into the capital mm -hmm. reserve. Um, I mean, there are a couple other minor reserves that you could establish, but they're not ones that are going to take a lot of money. Workman's comp, unemployment. Wait, which uh, ones should we look at? Well, there's a workman's compensation reserve, um, but that wouldn't take maybe more than $100,000. Mm -hmm. Same with unemployment because you don't have a a big experience rate of, you know, being being hit with unemployment. But they, you know, you could put a couple hundred thousand in that. But you have to churn through it. If it's just sitting there stagnant, you get hit for that too, don't you? No. No? Not, not particularly. Um, yes, the state wants to see you use these reserves, especially the ERS because it's, you know, such sizable reserve at the moment. Um, the smaller ones, they're there for emergencies, workman's comp, unemployment. Uh, so that there's not going to be any repercussions for leaving some money in there. Um, so yes, you could do that. You can do that. Alec, can you uh, just tell the board, along with the, the um, in the language of the transparency laws, it talks about the need for the Board of Education to specifically approve movements of money out of one reserve to another. Can yes. you talk about what that process is and which ones of those movements require a 15-day notice of public hearing? Um, 
I think the public hearing is only for you if you have a repair reserve, okay? Um, if you think you want to move money from, say, ERS reserve to the capital reserve, yes, the board should approve it. You come to the board, they make, you know, you make the motion, blah, 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 and then, you, and then they approve the moving of the money to the reserve. Approve to move the money back to the fund balance, whatever you want to do. But yeah, that's a standard procedure. But is it a 15, the only one that's a 15 day notice is the repair reserve? Yeah, I think so. There might be one other obscure reserve, but it's rarely used. Not one that we have. No, 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 no. The ones that you have are fine. I mean, I mean the capital reserve, obviously, you need voter approval to use it for a project. Um, but your ERS reserve, if, if Tom wants to take money out of there, you could do it tonight, you know, or whatever. You'd have a next meeting if you wanted to move money, uh, just a resolution to to reduce the repair, reduce the ERS reserve and put it in the capital reserve. So that's that's an easy fix. Terrific. Cheryl, did you have any questions? I'm good, thanks. Anybody else? Well, thank you very much. And again, thank we, we thank Tom and his office because um, you always give us good reports when we get well, the auditor's <laughs> report from Ray. I'd, I'd love to take full credit for it, but we have, a, we have just a tremendous staff of, uh, the community may want to know that we have five accounting and financial professionals on staff in the business office. Uh, and this is the product that uh, they're able to produce. So we're very yep. proud of them. Next year, they're gonna do this whole report and I'm just gonna bless it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> because we now have a CPA on staff and yes. the CPA will be doing the financial statements. Oh, good. Yeah, the new treasurer, Alicia, she's very good. Okay, awesome. Yeah, she, she, she did a lot of this. Um, and next year, we're gonna just say, okay, do it. I mean, that's the ideal situation. You go to a school, they do their own financial statement, and we just review it, make sure it's good, or <laughs> add our two cents or whatever. Um, most schools uh, honestly don't have the expertise in the office to do that, um, so we do most of them for them, and they understand. We make them understand what what's there. Um, but in certain instances, like we have here now, um, you could take it the, the full gamut, so to speak. Oh, that's uh, terrific. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Safe travels Thanks, home. Thank, Thank you. Alex. Thank you. Have a good night. I'm going to listen to the Yankees on the way home. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, we are going to go right to the personnel <coughs> agenda. So upon recommendation of the superintendent, hang on, so get up to the top of this. Um, on recommendation of the superintendent, the motion that the following be approved. We have two appointments in certified personnel. We have part-time temporary appointments, seasonal substitute appointments. We have an amendment to an appointment. We have our coaches, curricular, and extra duty. We have a coach. We have the uh, co-curricular um, for the middle school and the high school, I believe, mm. or just the middle school. No, it's the high school. And high school. High school. Yeah. Um, Teaching stipends, extra duty assignments under classified personnel, we have one appointment for civil service. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hmm? Oh, middle school is there, okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Okay. We're under policy. Can I have a motion to approve the second reading and the adoption of the following policies? We have 2310, the Board of Ed meetings, 5150, age of attendance and school admissions. 5152, admission of non-resident students, 5152R, which is the regulation for it. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We have some to delete. Be it resolved that the following policies shall be deleted from the policy manual because they are either obsolete, unnecessary, or included within another policy. Uh, 2352, rules of order, 1810, gift to school personnel, 5230, stu student social events, 5240, student performances, and 5260, student contests. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And then we have first reads. The board will conduct a first read on the following policies. So we have 1222, relations with school-related organizations, 1330, staff participation in political activities, 1400, public concerns, 1530, smoking on school premises, and 1740, relationships with non-public schools. Does anybody have any questions or comments on any of them? We worked hard on these. And some of them you're going to see us. Sometimes we're doing ones we've already done, but things are changing rapidly, and we're trying to keep up with everything. <coughs> so 
Hopefully we'll have these for a second read on the next board meeting. Okay, we're up to business office. A motion to approve the external auditor's report and the management response letter for the 2016-17 fiscal year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Harris Contracting uh, be a result of a recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, Yorktown Central School District Board of Education, hereby empowers the Board President to enter into the following agreements with Aris Contracting Corp for construction management services for the following capital projects. The middle school canopy restoration, the exterior uh, lighting at the high school middle school, the Mohansic door hardware, the residing and the re-roofing of the three buildings, maintenance and storage buildings, and the Brookside parking lot. So moved. Second. Everybody okay? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Everybody's so happy. Um, addendum to the Master Architectural Design Services Agreement with KSQ Architects, be it resolved upon recognition of the Superintendent of Schools, Yorktown Board of Education hereby empowers the Board President to enter into an agreement with KSQ Architects for additional design service fees associated with the Brookside parking lot in the amount of $6,100 to be paid and will be paid from the 17-18 operating school year budget for capital improvements and the Board of Education hereby authorizes and empowers the school district to execute the said agreement with KSQ for the same. So moved. Second. Second. Um, discussion. This is for the extra lighting and for the, um, the, it's the design for the lighting. It is, and it also goes to the engineering requirements for, for, all, for, for all of it because it's expanded in scope to Correct. get it proper. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, we have a Addendum a motion to approve the addendum to the 1718 BOCES service contract for communication services. Total cost not to exceed $17,725. The source of the funding is the general fund, and there is no increase to the operating budget. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Municipal cooperation agreement re resolved that the Yorktown Central School District BOCES shall continue membership in the plan pursuant to the general municipal law and insurance law be it further resolved that the president of the Board of Education is hereby authorized and instructed to execute this appendix to the plan's municipal cooperation agreement on behalf of the Yorktown Central School District and BOCES. So moved. Second. Discussion. This is for our health insurance consortium. Yes, this is the uh, agreement that governs <coughs> the manner in which the governing body of the health consortium operates. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A merger resolved upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education of the Yorktown Central School District, they hear, does hereby approve the merger of the Yorktown Somers, Henrik Hudson, and Croton Harmon School District's girls varsity gymnastic teams for the 17-18 season as per the merger application. So moved. Second. Discussion? Go ahead. Can we just have an explanation for the public <laughs> what that's all about, please? Explanation for the merger? Yeah. So our numbers were really light this year. We only had about three students go out. You generally need about 10 to field a team. So between the four districts combined, who uh, Yorktown, Croton, Summers, and Hendrick Hudson, I think we have about 10 or 11 students in total. Who's left for them to compete against? <laughs> there, are other, <laughs> there are other districts around the county that do have uh, full teams that we're able to compete okay. against. <laughs> Have our own correct. We have other teams that we've merged. We had the hockey team last year, right? Um, sometimes the swim team merges. That's correct. Sure. Um, it's, I, I kind of like it because at least the kids still get to participate. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hudson Valley Transportation Agreement. Motion to approve the contract for Hudson Valley Charter Services for transportation services pertaining to the field trip for the fifth grade social studies classes at Crompon School to the United Nations on Wednesday, October 25th, and Thursday, October 26th, at an amount not to exceed $5,700. So Second. A discussion. Um, Tom, just uh, because we have a normal Bauman, why? We competitively bid every transportation service. Mm-hmm. So and this is the low bidder? This is the low bidder of the five. Yes. Terrific. Thank you. You're welcome. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Pips? A motion to approve the following Yorktown Congress of Teachers professional improvement proposals for the 17-18 school year, and a motion to approve the following Yorktown Congress of Teachers professional improvement proposals, um, program proposals for the AIS teachers for the 17-18 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Special ed. A motion to 
arrange the following special ed placements for October six, as of October 16, 2017. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, gifts, grants, and donations. A motion to accept with gratitude the following gifts, grants, and donations. At Brookside, $500 in the Brookside PTA towards a second grade field trip to the Westmoreland Sanctuary. Crompon, $72.68 from the Crompon PTA to be applied to the fifth grade uh, United Nations school trip. At the middle school, $1,500 in the middle school PTA for the Michael Harold Assembly and Workshop. $750 from the Alliance for Safe Kids for partial payment for the eighth grade student assembly, Courage to Speak. <coughs> York Kent High School Pioneer League uniform shirts from an anonymous donor with logos and numbers. $1,000 from the Lynn Family Charitable Fund UBS in support of Yorktown Orchestra, led by Mrs. Torrente, and $8 from the New York Life Your Cause LLC. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much for the generous donations. <coughs> we are up to board comments. Cheryl, you want to start? I just want to say the middle school did a wonderful job. I think that um, the bit that they put together, um, and especially the video clip and seeing the shoes there, was such a, a creative demonstration of how empathy really impacts all the students. And if it didn't hit home in that lesson, then you know it, it really. I think they really just nailed it with that particular piece. So great job to all the students. They did a great job presenting, and great job to the staff as well for putting together such a great demonstration <coughs> and lesson. I'm good, thanks. It was very heartwarming to see the E in E-STEAM, and I can't wait for the, uh, the design challenge to see what our creative kids come up with. That'll be fun. Mike? No, I'm good. Pete? Anthony? Yes, I <coughs> agree. Wow, how great was the middle school today? I mean, uh, it's film, the kids teacher, the principals, it never ceases to amaze me. This is the best part of the board meeting when you see those kids come up there. Fantastic, and just kudos to them. Fantastic job today. And Tom and Tom with the audit, again, that was fantastic too. Thank you, Tom, taking out your time. And you, Tom, for doing always a great job. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, it was a great presentation, so I don't need to go on. I, I, I love the empathy piece. It's, it's huge, and it really means a lot, and I'm glad the kids, obviously the kids got it, so it was great. Ron, Lisa, Tom, anything you want to add? Just want to indicate that you know the middle school has always been a leader for us in Yorktown in terms of character education, mm -hmm. and they've kind of driven a lot of the work we've done K-12 in that, in that regard, and to see that they took uh, what started out as an initiative last year with a, a much stronger focus this year. And the two teachers, Mrs. Minicchio and Mrs. Cocadrilli, really showed how seamlessly it is that you can <laughs> add that theme of, in, of empathy into your curriculum that you're already teaching. So in addition to teaching about the literature and about comparing and contrasting literature and comprehension skills, they wove in seamlessly empathy and, and really didn't need to give up anything in, in terms of their content to do that. So it was really um, kudos to them. Thank you. Ron, anything? Just a great night having our students here really puts at the forefront of what we do. The, it's all about our students. It's all about preparing them to show their empathy to the world and to each other. And I'm so inspired. I'm leaving here tonight so inspired to continue the work that we've started last year and to build upon it with our e-steam work. These students represent all that's right in education. And I'm looking forward to seeing what lies ahead with the subsequent presentations to the board. Absolutely, okay, we are up to public comment. Anybody wishing to speak? Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn, but it's a motion to adjourn to go into executive session with the intent not to return to public session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, good night everyone.